Now, before we talk about pneumococcal vaccines, it's important to distinguish between pneumococcal disease and meningococcal disease. So when people talk about pneumococcal disease, in general, they are referring to pneumococcal pneumonia or pneumococcal meningitis, which are caused by the uh, organism Streptococcus pneumoniae, which is a gram-positive coccus. Now, this organism Streptococcus pneumoniae does have an outer capsule that's composed of polysaccharides, and because there is variation in this polysaccharide, there are more than 100 serotypes that are known, so the vaccines that we have are targeted at different serotypes. In general, we have two types of pneumococcal uh, vaccines. We have pneumococcal polysaccharide vaccine. So it's literally they have taken the polysaccharides and they have put it in there. So Pneumovax 23 has 23 different serotypes in there. We also have pneumococcal conjugate vaccine. These are uh, vaccines that are conjugated to a protein to improve immunogenicity. And there are currently four of them on the market. So PCV13, which targets 13 serotypes, PCV15, PCV20, and PCV21. Now, in contrast, we have meningococcal disease, which uh, essentially means meningococcal meningitis. And this is due to um, organism uh, Neisseria meningitidis, which is a gram-negative coccus, so it's very different than Streptococcus pneumoniae. And similarly, it has a different, um, because it has a capsule, there are different zero groups. There are 12 zero groups that are known. Worldwide, zero groups A, B, C, W, X, and Y cause uh, invasive disease, whereas in the U.S. is more likely to be zero group B, C, and Y. And there are diff uh, different vaccines on the market. So, for example, there are the ones that target zero group uh, A, C, W, Y. There are some vaccines that uh, target only zero uh, group B. And more recently, we have vaccine uh, that uh, targets all five of these that are most commonly causing disease. So if somebody wanted to prevent the risk uh, or reduce the risk of developing meningitis, essentially because there are two organisms that cause meningitis, they need vaccination against um, streptococcus pneumonia, so pneumococcal vaccine, as well as vaccines against Neisseria meningitidis, so meningococcal disease. Now, when we give pneumococcal vaccine to people, uh, so for sure, uh, you know, we are trying to prevent uh, uh, pneumonia, but more importantly, it is also reducing the risk of developing meningitis. So that's something important to keep in mind. In fact, when streptococcus pneumonia causes invasive uh, disease, uh, typically pneumonia, uh, which can be non-bacteremic for the most part, but some of these can be bacteremic uh, pneumonia. Uh, so, you know, when you have bacteremia, it can make it... Uh, throughout the body and uh, when it makes it to the brain, you will have meningitis. So, so these are relatively less common, but certainly more fatal. Now, as of this recording, there are five pneumococcal vaccines available on the market. The first one is the Pneumovax 23. So this is targeting 23 different uh, serotypes and it is approved for age two years um, Two years and older. Uh, these are essentially all of them uh, 0.5 ml intramuscular injections but Pneumovax uh, can also be administered subcutaneously and they all need to be uh, stored in a, uh, in a fridge so refrigeration is required uh, but not freezing. Prevnar 13 uh, targets 13 of these uh, serotypes uh, then we have uh, Vax Nuvans, which is PCV15, Prevnar20, which is PCV20, and Cavvaxive, uh, which is a PCV20. Now, uh, with the exception of uh, PCV21, they're all approved for adults and children. And uh, the PCVs, which are pneumococcal conjugate vaccines, differ from PPSV, which is polysaccharide uh, vaccine. Uh, they're essentially conjugated to CRM197 carrier protein. Uh, so all four of the PCVs are, uh, that's how they are conjugated. And that improves immunogenicity, which I'll explain in a minute. Uh, but also another thing to keep in mind that uh, PCV13, 15, and 20 also have aluminum in them as an adjuvant to further enhance immunogenicity. The latest one that has come to the market, PCV21, does not have this uh, adjuvant. Uh, 
you know, so that's something to keep in mind, and I'll uh, mention that uh, shortly. Now let's take a look at the which zero types they're covered. So you can see that PPSV23, which is the oldest one, covers 23 different zero types. And again, keep in mind that there are over 100 different zero types. So essentially, we're trying to target the ones that are more likely to cause disease. Now PCV7, uh, which is uh, not no longer on the market, uh, targeted seven of uh, seven of these that are also included in PPSV23. In general, the response from PPSV23 is not great. That's why we are trying to uh, have different PCVs. And it's more difficult to create PCVs because they're conjugated to protein. And proteins are much larger molecules, so they're more difficult to uh, include as many serotypes as possible in a single shot. So over years, we have seen the... Um, you know, evolution of these PCV vaccine. So PCV13, which is still on the market, covers uh, 13 of these. Uh, PCV15 added two more to PCV13. And then PCV20 added even more to PCV15. Now, one thing that's interesting, the latest one, which is PCV21, is not necessarily adding to the previous one. So it has a, you know, it actually excluded some of the ones that they think are no longer causing disease because of, you know, years of vaccination and herd immunity, but they have introduced a bunch of new ones that are uh, causing disease in uh, adults specifically. So the previous ones were specifically targeted at uh, children, uh, at children, uh, whereas PCV21 is more designed for adults. And here's what I mean. So when you see in this, uh, we're looking at different age groups. So we're uh, looking at what percentage of invasive pneumococcal disease is due to specific serotypes and the blue is what's included in PCV20 but not in PCV21 whereas uh, the uh, gray is included uh, is common in both PCV20 and PCV21 and then orange is included in PCV21 new uh, and is not in PCV20 so when you look at this for example in adults you can see that somewhere between uh, 54 to 62 percent of invasive pneumococcal disease were due to serotypes were, that were included in PCV20. But when you look at PCV21, that actually improves it. So somewhere between 77 to 85 percent of invasive pneumococcal disease cases in adults uh, are actually covered by PCV21. So that's why PCV21 was designed to improve um, um, essentially prevention of pneumococcal disease in adults specifically. Now let's take a look at some of these vaccines. So PPSV23, which is the oldest uh, one on the market, uh, came to the market in 1983. Because it's pneumococcal vaccine, it does not depend on T cells. And because, uh, uh, you know, um, infants or toddlers under the age of two have not uh, de uh, matured their immune system, uh, you're essentially not going to have immuno, uh, immunogenicity in age under two years. So PPSV23 uh, for that reason, because it uh, does not activate the T cells, uh, it is not uh, used for under age two. Now this does cover 23 valence and essentially the studies have never shown that it can actually reduce the risk of pneumonia, but certainly it can prevent invasive pneumococcal infection, specifically meningitis. So it, there is certainly value in administering it to people. And then PCV13, which is the better formulation, so it's conjugated, uh, so it has enhanced immunogenicity that depends on T cell. And for that reason, it does uh, work in children under the age of two. So it's approved for anyone six weeks old uh, and older. So it's part of, uh, or it has been part of uh, childhood uh, immunization schedule uh, and it uh, in fact it came uh, to the market for children first before it came to the market for adults since uh, 2010 and it has been proven to prevent not only meningitis but also pneumonia so PCV13 is definitely uh, more valuable than PPSV23 but because it only uh, covers 13 serotypes they definitely need to be administered in combination not necessarily at the same time, uh, but I'll uh, go over the schedule shortly. 
Now, the new pneumococcal vaccines, so PCV 1520 and 21, have come to the market in the past few years. So, since in 2021, we saw that PCV 15 and 20 came to the market uh, for adults first, followed by approval for children. And PCV 21 currently is only approved for adults. Now, uh, these are essentially uh, come to the market based on immunogenicity data. So we don't have efficacy data for any of these. So in other words, nobody has done studies to show that they can prevent pneumonia or meningitis. What they have done is to show that they can trigger the immune system to have uh, antibody response against uh, these serotypes that are included. So PCV 15, 20, and 21, they all have shown that uh, they can have robust immune response. Now, here's what the CDC recommends when it comes to using these vaccines. So essentially in a healthy person, so person with no comorbidities and person who has not received a PCV uh, vaccine in their life. And I say that because nowadays PCVs are part of childhood immunization, but they didn't always exist. Uh, so there are a lot, you know, a large portion of the population did not have these vaccines when they were children. Uh, but, you know, nowadays children are receiving these as part of their vaccine, uh, childhood um, immunization. So for people who have not received this as part of uh, their childhood uh, for, you know, ages 19 to 64, for a healthy person, there's really no need for these. Now, once these people turn uh, 65, they do need to get vaccination against pneumococcal disease. Uh, because of high risk of mortality when it comes to pneumonia and other invasive pneumococcal disease. So they can essentially get any of these PCV. Uh, but it's important to get the PCV. So remember, PCVs are more effective than pneumo uh, PPSV. So they can get either PCV 15, 20, or 21. So any of them are recommended with no preference uh, over one or another. Now, the caveat is that if you, the patient did get PCV 15, 15, they do also need to get a PPSV23 just because 15 is not covering as many P serotypes as possible, whereas 20 and 21 cover a large variety of uh, serotypes. And here's the timing. So the timing is because PCVs are more effective, they should always get that first. In the case of 20 and 21, there's no need for PPSV anyway. So that's all they get. So either PCV20 20 or 21. However, if the patient did get PCV15, a year later, they will get a PC PPSV23. And it's important to know that PCV and PPSV20 should not be co-administered uh, at the same time. So there needs to be some time between them. In this case, for healthy uh, persons, at least one year. Now, in case somebody had received PPSV23, again, because PPSV has been to, on the market since the 80s and these vaccines are relatively new, you could come across people who had previously received PPSV23 a few years ago, and now they're interested in these new vaccines. So there needs to be at least one year apart uh, between PPSV23 and they can get uh, pretty much any of these. So PCV15, 20 or 21, uh, you know, with no specifically pre preference, uh, you know, for one over another. Vaccine doses do not need to be repeated if uh, they were given before age 65. In other words, uh, in healthy persons, they don't need to get vaccinated before age 65. They do after 65. But in case somebody, you know, went ahead and got it, let's say at age 60 or age 55, um, you know, by the time they turn 65, there's no need to repeat it. As long as they have got this at some point in their life, uh, that's what matters. They will be prote protected once they turn 65. Now, when PCV15 is used in those with history of PPSV23 receipt, it did not be followed by another dose of PPSV23. So in other words, if somebody had PPSV23, then got PCV15 when they turn 65, uh, you know, they're complete. They, there's no need to wait another year to give another PPSV23. Now, let's take a look at people who have other conditions. So, there are good to, uh, it's good to think of three different groups. The first one is immunocompetent persons who have comorbidities, and that includes alcoholism, which the CDC defines for females having four or more drinks on an occasion in the past 30 days, and a drinking occasion is considered to be approximately two hours long. And for males, having five or more drinks on an occasion in the past 30 days. 
And uh, the next one is chronic heart disease, but not hypertension. So these are things like heart failure, uh, chronic liver disease, uh, such as uh, cirrhosis, chronic lung disease like COPD, cigarette smoking, and diabetes. For these people, uh, you know, prior to age 65, between 19 and 64, it's required for them to receive a PCV vaccine. So is there PCV 15, 20, or 21? And uh, if it's PCV 20 or 21, there's no need for PPSV 23, uh, just like um, healthy people. But with PCV 15, they do need to get their PPSV 23 a year later. Now, the next two groups are more uh, severe uh, conditions. So the first one is CSF leak and cochlear implant. Yeah, but immunocompetent and then the third group is immunocompromised person so these are people with asplenia people with cancer chronic renal disease uh, hiv infection immunodeficiency sickle cell disease and solid organ transplant for these people uh, again uh, it is important for them to get the pcv vaccine prior to age 65 so either pcv 20 21 or pcv 15 and of course with PCV15, they do need to get PPSV23. What's different with these two groups is that because their conditions are more severe, you may consider giving that PPSV23 sooner. So instead of waiting a year to give that PPSV23, an eight week separation can be considered for PCV15 to give, give them that extra coverage as soon as possible. And it says it's considered because uh, you know you might get the uh, insurance issues. So this is a matter of whether uh, you know you can get the insurance to work or not. Now, in case people had previously received PPSV23, they do need to get their PCV uh, at least one year apart in order to get uh, full protection. Now, because PCV13 has been on the market for the longest time, the question is, what do we do for people who had previously completed their uh, immunization schedule? Uh, you know, so specifically for age 65 and older, so they had completed, they got their PCV13 and they got their PPSV23. And these vaccines, uh, the other ones were not available at the time. So they finished what should we do now? So this is essentially a shared clinical decision making. So, you know, you can discuss with the patients uh, uh, potential benefits of these vaccines. And if their insurance covers it, for example, or if they're willing to pay out of pocket, uh, you know, they may uh, receive PCV21 or PCV20 at least five years after that PPSV23. And PCV15 is not... Uh, on this uh, because those two extra serotypes is probably not worth the trouble but pcv20 and 21 give enough additional serotype uh, that uh, you know they may be considered as part of uh, shared decision making and for uh, those other uh, patients who have uh, you know indications for getting the vaccine before age 65 uh, you know the same uh, the same so if they had received pcv13 uh, they may get pcv21 or 20 uh, you know at least a year later and for those who had received uh, pcv13 and they completed it with ppsv23 and back in the days uh, some of these immunocompromised patients actually needed to get two ppsv23s after pcv13 so regardless if they have completed it by the time they turn 65 uh, they can get either PCV21, uh, 20, or get another PPSV23.